we are assisting these days more and more towards something that is indirectly called transcending uh, humanity. But is this necessarily a good or a bad thing? Now, when we have the word transcend or the word trans in a short version, because that's what technically trans means, it means beyond, and you have trans, well, send, right? Transcendence, the aspect of going beyond a certain level, a certain limitation or something like that. We have the so-called aspect of transgenderism, and we also have, let's not forget, transhumanism. Now, transhumanism is related to the idea of merging humanity with AI. As I said, AI and machines are nothing else than tools, and, well, if people want to become machines, well, that is up to them. As I said, if you give tools to ignorance, you'll make greater ignorance. If you turn an ignorant into a machine, well, I doubt you'll make them wiser. But given how much control there is in this sick society, that is, after all, a big set of questions. Better said, a big set of big questions. Because when you transform people into machines, given how much control there is through machines in this world, and how much surveillance there is, the point is, would you actually agree that this idea of transhumanism, if you become merged with the machines, you're probably not going to become a better human. Many would ask, but why? Having a cybernetic body may be actually the way to the future. See, everything in this world has an expiry date. As I've said, when the soul, let's call it soul, wants to leave, the point is you will leave behind a body be it machine, be it physical, be it elemental, or whatever other uh, form that life may embody it, when life chooses to leave, you will simply leave that behind. See, sci-fi has poisoned humanity's minds with the idea that everything that is machine is immortal. See, this narcissistic's, this narcissist's greatest fear, that of death, right? Because a narcissist is someone who ultimately has the lowest self-esteem possible, but they constantly have to lie that they are perfect and they see themselves as gods. And when their belief is that they are gods, well, the point is death is basically the utmost uh, swear towards them, right? Why would one ask? Well, very simple. Because when death would come, it takes away all that which they think they are. So technically they lose everything that they think they are, right? They are not gods, they are not superior to anyone. It's just, you know, a psychological show. It's just theater in one's mind. So the point is, if one chooses to become a machine, they may think that, you know, machine parts are easier to replace. Well, is it? Obviously nowadays, well, changing your computer is, uh, well much less expensive than, you know, a liver transplant, and there is, well, no risk involved. The most risk would be that you buy a piece, right, and it's not compatible with what you have, but you can replace the whole. You either buy a new computer or you buy better equipment, right, better pieces, mount them together, and that's it, you have a much better computer. When it comes to the biological part, see, there are forces in this society that say everything that is biological, everything that is human is weak, right? Why? Well, maybe because they can't simply go beyond their own frustrations. Let's not forget we've lived as a society thousands of years of frustrations and ignorance. And this has bred people who believe they are some kind of gods and they want to simply turn humanity into nothing else than a mockery. Do you think, well, do you think humanity is, you know, nature's favorite? Well, nature has given us the gift of awareness. Obviously, we have ignored it because we are still a society of ignorance. But do you think society cares whether we have invented transgenderism, for example? Right? Because nowadays, even we've also seen the ad from Calvin Klein regarding, you know, the first pregnant male, and the fact that there are some fuckers in the world who want to turn this into a reality, and not, not only a reality, but a new norm. See, the point is, do you think nature would actually care about it? 
Now, obviously, if you look back in history, we don't have any mentions of, you know, transgender leaders and the such. Obviously, if this becomes a new normal, history can obviously be shapeshifted and you can say any leader in the world was actually transgender or was gay or, you know, anything that would support the new uh, paradigms. Now, see, there is a difference in between accepting something and being forced directly or indirectly by a uh, agenda. Because how I see things is that all these aspects seek to turn, you know, humanity into a living circus, right? Because turning humans into machines, the agenda beyond that is definitely not one to simply better humans. If we are to look clearly at how things lie, this sick society is all about control, dominion, right? Diminishing your rights so that you live constantly as a slave, you know, bowing before others. Someone who never gets to know their own true personal power so that you are easily controlled by, you know, impulses, needs, and the same strategy that society applies, right? Society always creates problems and then there are the so-called people who come in as the so-called solutions, right? Because when society creates a problem, people will react and then you need someone to come in as a hero. Problem, reaction, solution. That's how it's called. And one of the solutions, well, see, throughout the pandemic, the European Union's main agenda midway through the pandemic was to vote for, you know, transgender males' rights to, you know, give birth to children. In a so-called pandemic where, you know, people had to be the priority and medication had to be a priority and healthcare and well-being had to be a priority, this is what the European Union was focusing on. So obviously there is a big circus going on and it's mocking us all humanity. Even if it creates extra genders, nature won't bother much. They think this whole universe would care if we humans destroy ourselves. Not that we haven't done it for so many times, but, well, everything is a cycle in life. The karma that we accumulate as a race will come to bite us back. Now, the point is, this world needs people who, you know, they are vertebrate, right? People who have a spine, people who can think, and not only for themselves, because this world is already full of these people, but it's not even full of people who think for themselves because the people who usually pose as politicians are in most situations, you know, dumber than the AI. They have been programmed to do their business, usually being, you know, uh, economical assassins or, you know, so-called pseudo-influencers, you know, people who are there to simply shape the masses' uh, will, right? Because this society is a battle for the hearts and minds of people a few, me, and everyone else. The more division you create, the easier it is to rule people, right? Because this society does nothing else than, well, exploit the insecurities of people. Many people have a fear of death, so there is sci-fi, there is fantasy, you know, to distract you from that. And then there's also sci-fi in the grand scheme that, you know, uh, poisons your mind to believe that if you are a machine, uh, you know, you can instantly re replace your parts, right? And you can live forever. But, you know, when it comes to humans and our ignorance, do you think those pieces will be given to you for free just because, uh, you know, you're a machine? No. If we all humans become machines, it's gonna be the same situation, right? It's just that from a perspective of the body, it's probably gonna be much easier for a transplant because it's no longer a biological regime, but again, you can make a cybernetic regime reject certain parts because, you know, every company that would create those parts would want their own monopoly. So if you buy your parts for the cybernetic body from a certain company, most likely that company will make them incompatible with any other competitor's parts, right? So you can have all sorts of complexities popping up. When it comes to transgenderism, well, this in a way feels like a mockery towards uh, women, in a way, and towards humanity as a whole. Because nature has created all of us, all the races that have genders, right? Uh, they have the ability to give birth through their females. Now that we humans want to play God and, you know, we want to alter this, well, 
In a way, there is basically no problem in that, and I don't see nature doing much against it. But the problem is, this is not something that would, you know, boost humanity. Because let's think about one thing. We are an ignorant race. Most of us humans are still extremely ignorant. Because, well, that's how we've been for thousands of years, and it's kind of hard to snap people out of it. Our population has boomed, and we're all constantly told about, you know, populational controls and, you know, people must die through pandemics and the such, because we know all these are more or less real. I mean, sure, the evidence is everywhere, but people will prefer to keep a blind eye because, you know, the truth is always hurtful. If we are to move even further, there is one simple point, though. If we, in our ignorance, have been, you know, booming in population numbers till now, with only the women being capable of, you know, reproducing, think how much more, you know, people will breed when men will also be able to, you know, bring life, uh, well, into this world, right? Because the point is, the more you can breed, well, the more children you will have. The problem is, we don't teach anyone how to treat their own bodies, because ultimately, the way one treats their own body, the vibration and the energy frequency of their body dictates what kind of life they will bring into the world. This is of an extreme importance because when you have a woman treated well accordingly, she will have, you know, much greater vibration. And as a man, you should also know how to seek your woman and seek, and seek a woman based not on your karmic desires, but based on, you know, the needs of your own life. Because you would want a child who comes, you know, through a greater vibration. Because people being ignorant, they will just, you know, karmically attract someone. They won't do anything good. They need a special day in the year to be reminded that, you know, they should love one another. And, you know, they will probably buy some, uh, you know, uh, cheap thing or whatever gifts and you know it's done in a superficial behavior and probably they will send one another you know pre-made messages because people are that superficial and you know when you have such people when they breed they will create something at least as much as them and that's a problem because ignorance when they breed they will unfortunately create more ignorance. Now the point is, every child has a certain genius, but the schooling systems in this sick society have been done in such a way that, well, it makes you dumb. It makes you feel that you are useless, that you are not uh, good enough, and all sorts of such things, you know, that build even more frustrations, frustrations that most likely also have from previous lives, and well, you'll continue to live in this idiotic cycle, right, in which you will simply negate your own voice and live in fear constantly. And, well, most likely you will conduct the agenda of this society that living in those low vibrations, you will breed, you know, with a similarly low vibrational being and you will bring life that is not needed in this world. You will bring even more low vibrational uh, life force in this world that will live, well, most likely just like you. So the point is, this aspect of transhumanism, right, turning humanity into something better, well, turning humanity into machines ain't a bad thing if we think of it, but the question is, how are you thinking of, you know, doing those things? Because everything is most likely like a tool. How you use it is the most important thing, not the fact that you have it. Right? Let's not forget that our ancestors lived for thousands of years, far before we had technology. And, well, they did cope with things quite well, if you ask me. Nowadays, if you shut down the entirety of technology and we go back to the Stone Age, how many people will be able to survive, right? So, the point is, isn't this something control-based as well? Because now that we see something, there is a trend. Every time there appears a new trend, right? The way that the trend is uplifted is by, you know, a thing called political correctness, right? When you have political correctness, well, that is, that is a very great abomination because it is a well-concealed um, 
you know, ban system, right? Because if you are talking about something, you know, it's not political correct, right? You are basically disallowed to talk about it because why does it have to be called politically correct? Because there is no such thing as politics involved. Oh, wait, it is supported by politics because politics also pays for you know, the NGOs who shape people's minds and most of the things, you know, that follow the agendas of, you know, the so-called greater ones. Because there are people who have acquired a certain power and they make use of politics and all sorts of ropes in a society to simply, you know, shape the beliefs and ideals of humans. And, you know, the point is... This censorship called, you know, political correctness is yet another tool for control. And this political correctness does nothing else than, well, the same work that NGOs are doing. Seek people by their uh, insecurities and exploit those. Turn those people into so-called minorities and then support these minorities, right? Nowadays, you can't say much about LGBT because you know they are a minority. So now they are far more important than the so-called majority, right? Because when you say protect a minority, it means fuck the rest. It means fuck the majority, right? This is how fanaticism works. When you believe in something, everything else is the enemy. And when you say you know, protect a certain minority, it means fuck everyone else, right? It's the same principle, it's just that it is said in a more milder way so that you don't figure out the agenda. And now, if we move even further, well, when you say, for example, Black Lives Matter, it means fuck everyone else, right? It's not an idea of supporting black people, most likely at the surface it is, but every time something like this appears, right, there is always a huge amount of organizations that make a lot of money out of that, because that's what this society is. Humans are nothing else than money-making batteries, and they have to be milked constantly. This is what this sick society is all about. Using you as a battery, and then discarding you at the end when you're no longer useful. Right? You either serve their agendas or you're simply an enemy. That's how, um, well, that's how fanaticism works. That's how ignorance works. Because ignorance is basically like plastiline, right? You're a mold and you can easily and instantly be shaped into anything. Because an ignorant is someone who doesn't believe or, better said, can't believe in anything. So people need, you know, ignorance because they are easiest to mold. Right? Ignorant people don't know much, so they have a lot of frustrations, they have a lot of insecurities, so they are easy to rule based on their insecurities. That's why NGOs exist and that's why they are so diversified. Again, everything that is done in a society, it is nothing else than a tool. How we make use of it decides whether, well, speaks for it, speaks for us, whether that, well, let's say, let me say it again. So everything in a society indeed is a tool. How we make use of it? Well, it speaks by itself, right? By that action, it speaks whether we use it consciously or we use it unconsciously. If we seek to use it for controlling purposes and for you know personal gains, most likely that is unconscious, right? It is still those urges, right? To control that passion towards destruction, right? When you are simply guided by the idea of uh, entropy, right? You give your energy towards destruction. There is a passion to destroy in this world. And that is unfortunately that which fuels fanaticism. Because you can fuel your energies into creation or into destruction. You can fuel your energies towards entropy or towards, you know, the opposite. All this being said, hopefully this video was introspective. It did feel a bit all around, yes, but, well, hopefully it was introspective enough. You are appreciated. Take care. Ferengian Board signing out.